Welcome to the Didi and Latal Show. Advice, thoughts, and stories from a married couple on cybersecurity, technology, and life in general. Now here are your hosts, Didi and Latal. Hello, and welcome to the Didi and Latal Show. Um, another week. Um, how are you doing, Didi? Uh, well, I am broken inside. Brady. Brady. That's what why happened? That's, that's a t-shirt. Now he, un- now he retired twice. And Do you think now it's for good? Uh, we don't know. I doubt it. Uh, I think he did. I think he did. Uh, Do you think he's getting back with Giselle? No. No. I don't know. The Instagram looks like it might happen. Well, Instagram is your space. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> old people curmunging on radio, that's my space. Okay. So, Gabby, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. You're not following. <laughs> well, we have a great guest with us today. Gabby, please introduce mes- yourself. I'm um, very happy to have you with us. Thank you very much for inviting me. How is it going? Cool. It's a nice morning, a little bit cold. Cold, yeah. yeah. We're but, in the Boston uh, area and it's frigid. Yeah, but uh, it's good to be here. It's good to get out of the house, you know, uh, yes. do the drive. So uh, when I use usually podcasts and stuff like that, I usually do it from my Zoom, right? So this is actually a nice experience getting I'm out. I'm glad we took you out yeah, of home and yeah. got you here. I remember awesome. you told me, yeah, here's the address. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes. An address? An address. An there address is a thing. You get in your car and you yeah. move. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, yeah. well, you've been in cybersecurity and in entrepreneurship for yep. years. So... Yep. Maybe tell us a little bit about your career, what brought you here. (laughs) Okay, wow. So I I started very young. Um, I've been an entrepreneur, I would say, most of my life. Um, The only time that I wasn't an entrepreneur and I actually was an employee in a company is when I had to pay debts because my first company failed. So that was like two years that I've uh, worked as a CTO in a company paid back my debt and bounced back and uh, continued my journey. It's a, it's a life journey, entrepreneurship. So this is something that I uh, love, I enjoy, and cybersecurity specifically and technology. Um, so the, I won't go throughout my entire career. It's, it's going to be a but lot tell of- tell us the interesting tidbits. Yeah, so the last, I would say, 15 years, I've been, um, I've built a company called Observe It which is an uh, inside a threat solution that was uh, basically sort of like a big brother, to be honest. And we were building a program that watched what people were doing on their um, desktops and servers in order to find if people are misusing data in the company, uh, whether partners that connect from remotely do that. And that turned out to be uh, the leading inside a threat solution that is still the leading one. It was acquired by Proofpoint Um, After that, I took a 180 degrees turn. I tried my luck in uh, something uh, totally different in the consumer space, uh, in the fashion business. I'm not fashionable by any mean, but uh, I created a mobile app, which uh, failed miserably, to be honest. But it was an interesting spin and learning curve for me about content creation, about... um, consumer marketing, which is very, very different from the B2B that, you know, we mostly do here. So that together with my background in security, obviously led me to start Wiser, which is a security awareness solution where we create viral videos about security awareness stuff that everybody can enjoy, including families and kids. And um, we created a platform and we've grown exponentially in the past three years. So we are over 10,000 customers that are using our product. And we have both a free version and a paid version. And uh, we've been growing like crazy. And uh, people love that um, videos that feel that they are very similar to what you experience in social media. So I took that social media aspect, the thing that I learned in the fashion business, how to create content, and I used that together with all my cybersecurity experience. And I think something beautiful really uh, came out of this. That is so interesting because yeah. that's not the typical road that oh, an no, entrepreneur in security 
B2B business will take. Yeah. And um, so is your... Uh, Lita, let me, yeah. let me pause yeah. you for a sec because <laughs> uh, let's agree to disagree. Okay. Because what I've seen with almost everybody in security is that you get out of security because you said, I have enough with security. And then you go to someplace else say, oh, crap, this is so, I did it. so boring. <laughs> right now I'm talking to a whole slew of PMs that are going back, back, back to security yeah. because after you've done security a little while, it's really hard to go into, is this all we're doing? I, I, I have to say from my experience, I kind of like took a break from cybersecurity uh, for a while and did a little bit of different tech, data, education tech came back and I'm not leaving. Um, they, so it, it, it's an addiction. Once you get yeah. into security, it's like something that holds you. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, it, the consumer wasn't boring at all. It just yeah. failed. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and it was upsetting, obviously. It's because your fashion taste is not No, as nothing good to do with market. fashion taste. Again, that's a whole new, like, I have so much that I've learned about, you know, the consumer space. I can talk about it for an hour, but, um, it's it's I love it and I may go back to it one day, but what I realize is that I can you know when you're looking at things from a different vantage point and you can bring that into the you know B two B world, something amazing happens when those worlds collide. When you can sort of stay in the business of cybersecurity but think like you know consumer marketing, because and that's why I also picked uh, security awareness because it's applicable to all of us. It's not something that um, you know, you have to be very techy to understand. That's something that is applicable for my kids. Yeah. Right? It's something that you feel that you can make an impact on the world. You can make the world a better place. And you have to bring something different because the way security awareness was, uh, the way I saw it, it was people talking very you know, techy to other people um, and the thing is, because security awareness is a compliance requirement, people are forced to watch it. And because people are forced to watch it, all the employees have to watch it and they have to get this 100%. So the quality of the content is very low because it's not a choice. So people are sitting down, you know, doing the training and not usually thinking- doing something, Usually doing something else at the same time. That's true. Because the people that created the content don't have that mindset of, what if they didn't have to do this? Yep. Would they watch what I've done? But they assume, look, you're gonna be sitting down and watching it anyways, so we're gonna do it our way. And I said, no, it doesn't have to be like that. And that's why I post a lot of the content that I create, that you know we create on social media, because it allows me to gauge if people are actually interested in the content, because that's it's optional, right? They don't have to. And some of those videos blew up, like I'm talking like 100,000 views, 300,000 views, which is like crazy and people are sharing it and we're posting it all over social media, not just on LinkedIn, for some people that know me on LinkedIn, but we're posting it also on TikTok and other places. And the fact that people are sharing it tells me this is good content. And then we push it out to employees and we created actually a share button in our platform so employees can share it with their families and friends for free. They, you know, no sign up or anything. You can grab the link and share it. And that's one of the key indicators we track the most, not completion rate. Mm. We track how many people, how many employees choose to take those videos and share it with people externally. I love it because it makes the content, not just, you know, being a compulsory thing, but actually something viral yeah. that, you know, uh, you start and probably you, you get paid by those companies yeah. that uh, have an obligation to make, to force the employees to go through those videos, but actually you're doing a better good of making it viral, yeah. making people around the world know about it. It's, it's that mindset of you have to make it viral. Don't, don't uh, fall into that comfort zone that people have to watch it so I can, I can lecture any way I want. Yep. Mm. You have to have feedback. Yep, we have so. a, I have a very funny anecdote about that. Okay. Speaking of the compulsory, we know of at least one CEO who used to make his admin go through the, com go through the training instead of him. <laughs> which kind of beats the, the purpose because yeah. the people that are targeted most are the C-levels. Absolutely. And these are the people least likely to actually do this when it's compulsory. 
because again and and th- i think that's where we failed in security awareness and yep. that's what you know i came to change and that's why i post a lot a lot about it in social media and social media allows me to keep uh you know sort of to sharpen my saw you know yeah. like to make sure that we keep on creating engaging content because like i said the companies and the completion rate is all will probably always be 100% just because people are forced you nudge them enough and stuff like that but a few other things we'll look at is how often do we need to nudge people in order to finish training so this is another KPI we'll look at and in our case it's almost nothing like people are asking for more which is yeah. crazy because yeah. they enjoy it they enjoy yeah and that's key that's amazing uh so important what are the topics you're covering and does it go beyond I, I, i'm not sure what's yeah. the obligation these days i'm sure phishing and password protection and things like that yeah. are kind of like the basic uh, um obligatory topics yeah. but what topics you cover what do you think goes beyond the yeah. basic that people should know these days so i think in order to again in order to get something engaging i think what you need to do and this is what we do is we make sure that every video also has a personal benefit. So you can cover phishing in many ways, but you can talk about how our company will suffer if you click on the link and how much money we will lose, which is the traditional, or you can talk about, you know, how your social media account will be hacked and that phishing is not only email. Phishing is on comments. phishing we talk about things like right now we have to do that because technology is advancing so we're talking about ai and we're talking about deep fake and we're showing examples of how people got scammed by watching social media post of people saying something they believe it's the person but it's a deep fake um you know people getting phone calls from people they know it's voice cloning um so you have to keep the interest level up. People want more and not always the same. They don't want to learn about what is phishing. Phishing is when you are being, you know, a uh, fool to click on a link like they heard that 100 times. Like give me more. So make it personal. Um unfortunately scammers are evolving. Yeah. Fast. The training need to evolve. Now we have them. ChatGPT and other AI tools that it's funny now the f- We used to say look for grammar mistakes. Now it's actually look, gonna be. now it's actually look for perfect, perfect grammar, grammar. Yeah. because nobody writes like that. You know, like who writes perfect grammar? Yes, there are people, right? But most people when they're But just But they're not the, 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 your Oxford friends. Common, yeah. uh, you know. Probably uh, not your friend or maybe exactly. not. Exactly. Maybe so, your CEO. So you can, you know, things are evolving fast. There are topics all the time. Uh we've seen for example mass layoffs recently so those are targets because criminals are sending emails to employees telling them you've been you know uh laid off you know open the uh, you know the zip file it has your servants package stuff like that and people you know read the news they think this is the reality they live in and everything matches so you know scams is about it's really comes down to like this uh, distorted reality where you heard about it on the news and then it happens to you and you think oh wow you know like it's real because everything is mixed up so content wise um make it personal talk about kids people love that um when you when you when your goal is to make the employee an ambassador at home to take tools to go back to their kids and family and friends and say hey you know you should be careful here you're changing the security culture of the company which is the most important thing this is awareness it's not like skill level this is we're not trying to train people to be security experts we want to raise awareness and to raise awareness you have to put it into practice you have to like do this in a regular basis and the best place to do it is take it home and practice with your family so give them something they can take home and practice the gd and latal show will return in a moment The Didi and Latal show is sponsored by Ort. In today's world, identities are the perimeter protecting the organization and are the most exploited vector by attackers. If your security teams are struggling to maintain control of identity management tools, Ort can help. 
ORT offers a centralized platform for discovering, monitoring, assessing, and remediating identity threats to your business. While most security platforms can take weeks or months to start identifying and remediating risks, with ORT, your security teams can get started in as little as 30 minutes and start securing the identity perimeter immediately. ORT will surface the most critical vulnerabilities and give your security teams the recommended action steps. Start your trial today at ORT.io. That's O-O-R-T dot I-O. The DD and Letal Show is sponsored by Hunters. Hunters is a SaaS platform purpose-built for security operation teams. Providing unlimited data ingestion and normalization at a predictable cost, Hunters helps SOC teams mitigate real threats faster and more reliably than SIM. Visit hunters.ai to learn more. And actually, most employees are still at home, right? Yeah. So home is work. So Absolutely. improving the behavior at home means it yeah. is better Look, at work. Look, your kids is playing games. So I had uh, one of my kids' friends, you know, I'm always talking to kids like, uh, like I told him, look, do you care about like being hacked? And he was like, no, I don't care. Like I, he said, I was actually hacked like five times. And I told him, and that doesn't scare you? He said, no, I just like, you know, reset my computer. I don't care, I have nothing to lose. And I was like going on and I was talking about, you know, your identity and I don't care. Like, honestly, doesn't care, doesn't care, doesn't care. There was only one thing that he didn't think about that made him stop. And later he came back to me and he was like, you know what, I, I stopped with all that, you know, uh, stuff, like all this crazy stuff that I'm doing. I told him, look, you, your computer is on the same network as your parents. You know, like if you get hacked, the, the to jump from your hacked computer, if you have a malware or whatever, to your parents' computer and get the whole family in trouble is like a matter, of, it's easier. Right. You're just introducing uh, attackers into your home. You don't want to do it. And he was like, you know what? I never thought about it. You know, he thought he was isolated. You know, yeah. it's only about his computer. He never thought about, you know, jumping from his computer to his parents' computer. They're sharing the same network. What I found to work with the kids is that they'll that somebody will hack them and then embarrass them publicly, like send an email to everybody yeah. at school. That that usually kind of. So that's another thing that happened, uh, where a kid that I spoke to, um, his Snapchat was hacked. And the thing is what they do, and um, a lot of those kids are using, you know, Snapchat, all of that to, because the camera has filters. So they save that in drafts or private or memory. All of those things are like private sections in the social media app. It's, they're not publishing it anywhere. It's like private, but it's cool. You know, a lot of funny stuff. And he had some embarrassing, you know, pictures of him and his girlfriend and he was hacked. And the person that hacked him, just did it for fun. He just spilled everything on social oh, media. Oh just no. for, like, didn't ask for money, didn't ask for anything, just to show the can. That's it, you know? And for so the people, social life of a teenager, that yeah. the embarrassment, that the emotional yeah. toll. It was a huge emotional toll. And and people don't realize, like, there is nothing really private on social mm. media. You, Storing you, all those sensitive documents, you know, people use their phones to take pictures of documents. You know, like the minute yeah, he took a picture, is out there. Yeah, you take a picture of just a document saved in the uh, cloud. Not even the cloud. Yeah, you, you're just if if something happens, you know, you have apps that are accessing your photo album. Right. They they can read all those sensitive documents that you stored on your phone. You took a picture of your driver license. You took a picture of. So people don't connect the dots. And there is a lot of apps. People trust, you know, um, Apple Store and Google that they filter out, you know, bad apps, but they can't. No, no, not only that, uh, I'll give you an example of something that happened to me. Okay. Uh, like recently, and I'm security trained. I, okay. I was trying to park in New Hampshire, and it's the middle of a snowstorm, and I look for the name of the parking app. Okay. And the first app that comes by is a scam. It yep. looks exactly the yeah. same way. Yeah, and it, and it comes up in Google. It's yeah. the first app that comes in the Google search. Yeah. It's not really. It's not. Did you yeah. report it? Of course. Do you think anything happened? No, mm -hmm. I, I can still find that. Look, a lot of those criminals hack um, ad accounts, Facebook ad accounts or Google accounts, and a lot of those companies are not even tracking those accounts at, at that level, and they're posting ads 
through legitimate companies. As if it's the legit company. Yeah. Uh, so, so it appears it's, it's the legit app. But they change the phone number, they change, you know, the URLs because they hacked the ad account. Yep. So that happens all the time. Um, I, you can't trust, you know, all those ads, not on Google, not on Facebook marketplaces, like crazy with scams. Um, it's a minefield, to be honest. Like, you, you need to be lucky not to step on one. <laughs> That's yep. where we are right now. So... It's a complex world. It is. And what's the best advice you can give to, you know, those that are not experts that yeah. obviously we are getting confused yeah. and like deep fake can confuse us. Deep fake uh, uh, yeah. voice calls can really confuse us. What's the best advice for people? First of all, you have to care about it. And a lot of people think it won't happen to them because... It will happen. Because <laughs> everyone is a target. Here is the thing, right? you know, day after day, nothing happens. You know, like, I feel like... Oh, you oh, don't know. I know, but that's what people feel. Right. Like, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. So you're becoming very comfortable with risk because you don't see it. It's not tangible. Cyber risk is not tangible like, you know, risk where we see a dark alley and we know, okay, we don't go there. Right. So, and that's the problem. So first of all, you need to be aware. I think, you know, you need to start teaching kids at early age about, you know, what a complex password is, like simple stuff. It can be fun. You can educate them, you know, like make a funny sentence or something like that, you know. Um, but make that part of the safety uh, teaching material. Just like, like, don't take a candy from so a stranger. That's something that also, actually, that's a great example. Right? You know, I usually tell people the same way you teach, don't take a candy from a stranger, tell them don't take a game cheat from a game from somebody from a stranger. Yeah. Because those game cheats can be, you know, or a download that it's somebody candy. offered you on Discord. Um, uh, so, you know, it's the same concepts, but you have to apply them to cyber. You have to be critical. Um, it's hard, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find clues, you know, because like I said, grammar is getting better, emails are getting spoofed, other accounts are getting hacked and they're using those accounts to hack you, like chain attacks. You really need to be an expert to be able to spot So you things. have to build that intuition. Hmm. You have to build that intuition. You have to, um, you know, lower your excitement level when you're getting an unexpected uh, notification. It can be from, you know, an app, it can be from a friend, whatever it is. Call. You have to verify anything that is asking you to take action, whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, like just, you know, even my wife, when she's asking me, hey, you know, I need this or that, I'm just like, I pick up the phone and call her. Did you actually ask it? On WhatsApp, you know, like because if a we friend assume, asks you something, you know, pick because up the phone we and verify. assume that if she on WhatsApp, if she texted me, then, then it's it, her. Right. But there's tons of scams where somebody's WhatsApp was compromised, and they're using that person's WhatsApp to hack all their friends' WhatsApp. So you just can't assume anything. It's your job to verify. So before you get excited, if the police calls you, if the IRS is calling you, if a friend. You know, there was another hack in a school where one of the kids got an email, uh, a DM on uh, on Instagram that said, oh my God, I saw you were on the top ugly list. Here's the link at school. And she was like, oh gosh, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm on. So she clicked and she logged in and she got hacked as well because her friend got hacked and they sent the DM from her friend's hacked account. Now they attacked her and so now they're using all her. the teenage anxiety. You yeah. the so now, now the entire list. grade was hacked. Oh my. Um, you have after school programs, you know, they use uh, Instagram stories and reels and all of those things. So that was hacked and they were telling kids to do one, two, three, four. So it's uh, it's crazy. But I think parents, I think the most important thing for parents is you know how you ask um, kids how was school today? You know, hey, sweetheart, you know, how was school today? Whatever, it, you know, whatever you're asking. We have to apply the same thing to this cyber world. How was social media today? Who is your friends on social media? Mm. Like, be curious. It's not like there's only offline. There's online and offline. Ron and his Russian hackers. <laughs> you need to know who are they talking to. Like, you need to know. It's not like only friends from school. Well, it's way more than that. Digital life is life. Exactly. It's basically our but kids. How they often leave do the parents ask their kids, how was digital life today? No, we, we don't get that. involved. They just yeah. it's the, and that's digital. That's like, oh, that's nothing. Yeah, they're, they're spending my, their time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
being lazy. That's a very good tip. Yeah, yeah. totally. So I think companies have an opportunity and it's an amazing opportunity to turn security awareness from a chore to a benefit. If they change their mindset and they hand uh, employees with education that they can take home, with things they can do to protect their own personal bank account, social media account, all of that, um, A, they're making a big impact on the world, they're helping people's lives, and that mindset will apply at work as well because the way you behave at home is the way you behave at work, so it's not like two lives. So if you start to become more aware at home about your bank account, about your social media account, about your kids account, now when you come back to work, you apply the same concepts. I love this idea. I think it's something for HR and, and other to think about the same as corporate supply, all those wellness programs, it is a wellness fitness, program. right? It is. Uh, yep. Like they bring in a nutritionist or yeah. they offer you free gym membership and like they give you all those perks. Why wouldn't they kind of like Who give wouldn't want that? Uh, but the thing is, so question yeah, go ahead. about that. Which populations actually object to this? Because you said who would wouldn't want this? Who does doesn't want it? Are there people that don't want it? You know, um, it depends on how you approach it. But I think we have harmed ourselves by this compliance, you know, force training where we have to do the same every year as well. We're like going back to like first grade every year and they're like, and nobody cares and they're just pushing it out because it's compliance. So there will, there will be a pushback if people are thinking, okay, it's gonna be more of the same. So, but if you flip the tables, you know, you turn the tables and you come to people and you do like, hey, we're doing a bring your kids, you know, webinar about online safety, you, you know, it's optional, whoever wants can join. I've, I'm doing this for our customers and like, like it's blowing up and like, we have a limited amount of people that we can, you know, have on a webinar and usually it's like tops it. We have to do like multiple people want it. Who wouldn't bring the teenagers to, to yeah, watch it, your, of course. Bring your teenager. And it's an interesting topic. It's relevant to all of us. But again, I think that, that's why I got into this because there has, it just doesn't make sense that people are pushing back. Like people should want this. What will make more people follow you on TikTok, Instagram, and consume your videos? You said hundreds of thousands of, of yeah. views. It's still small. I know, like, I know. Compared so with doing, the world. So we're doing two things. A, we're trying to make the companies uh, push out this content to their employees. Yeah. I'm talking the optional content beyond the, the traditional security awareness. So through employees, you can get to, uh, to their family and their friends. So that's sort of like our social network, you know, um, the employees and their family and friends. That's one way we get to like, you know, the masses. The other one, we work with content creators and influencers on different channels and different uh, social media, and they're also posting it and pushing it. And I'm doing this, you know, this is the, it's, it's, it's endless. Like you have to keep on, I'm relentless. And that's, you know. And that's that amazing. Is, that's I, I, I push, 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 push. And by the way, you know, we're also making money out of it because a lot of companies buy into why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So they end up, you know, uh, purchasing our solution versus other solutions. Even though we have so many things for free, they are still supporting us and buying the, you know, the the paid version that includes like fishing simulation and some other stuff that are required. So it's good for business as well. So this is the best marketing ever. Doing good for the community, social responsibility is the best marketing uh, you can imagine, just way better. And we hardly spent a dollar on advertisement and yeah. we just blew up. Just organic, just organic people organic. virally organic. sharing. Amazing. Absolutely. I want to say something that the social media platforms like the TikTok, Meta, I would love them to offer as something good for the world. First, so they started, make you sharing and, and make you know TikTok after a while tells the teenager yeah you've been scrolling yeah. for too long pause maybe at that point they give them you know a, a training about cybersecurity so they raise awareness it's good for their business if yeah. people are not hacked and Without, the platform is more secured yeah. yeah yeah so that's something that um 
It's not at that level, but you know, uh, we were approached by TikTok and they started to share on their newsroom. They have like a section on their website nice. where they started to push this out as well. So they are trying again, you know, um, but there could be much more like, you know, I think Absolutely. this should be almost, this is beyond my company. This should be a movement. This is like green, you know, like we have to learn how to be safe online. It's, it's, there's, you know, this digital roadways that we're crossing them all day long without looking left and right, just because risk is not tangible anymore. And we're not as a human, as, as a, as a we are, human we are, being, we're not. We're indoctrinated to think of physical harm versus, exactly. versus right. Exactly. Versus so we don't see the harm. harm. So, and unfortunately, um, it converts to physical harm. You know, I don't want to like upset people here. You know, the audience, but there are some really bad stories of how this ends. Right. Um, so it is a real risk. This is more than money. This is way more than just like losing sometimes money. money yeah. Suicide. I, I have a lot different of different bad stories. Yeah. 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 Little, we need to get to our favorite corner because we're getting okay. close to the end of the time. Excellent. So, oh, Didi, yeah. you take it. We have a little game to play with you, Gabi. So, Didi will ask the questions, but you think about that. Uh, producer Dave, I think we... Come. And now, Lital and Didi present Prove You're Not a Robot. Three oh. final authenticating <laughs> questions for our guest. Speaking of identity awareness and uh, security awareness, one of the things we do as part of our show is we play this little game. So, question number one. If you were a cybersecurity superhero, what would be your name and who would play you in the Hollywood movie? Oh gosh, this is hard. <laughs> of course it's hard. Yeah, you put me on the spot here. Of course, uh, that's uh, part of the fun. So if you were a cybersecurity hero, what would be your name? Um, oh gosh, like I'm gonna be boring here. Um, well, you're the one that uh, is a social media. Ah, okay, I need to think, guys. <laughs> social man? Social man. <laughs> Let's go with let's go with it's the like, Hollywood actor. Let's start with that because that can give you a sense of what the super. I'm so bad in like uh, um, actors' names <laughs> and That's stuff. That's good. That so so far we had Daniel Craig and we had a few others. Uh, what who did uh, Amit say he wanted to be acted by? Keanu Reeves. Oh yeah. Or um, oh, that Bill Hader. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is good. Yes. Yeah. I can, can I copy paste that? Of course. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's okay. So then it's, we can do something with the I'm, metrics. I'm, I, I, yeah. go, I go with Bill Burr. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Come on, guys. Like Cyber Gabby, whatever. <laughs> Cyber Gabby. I like Cyber Gabby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So. What's your favorite hacking or breach horror story? But that Could doesn't go together, now. you know, like favorite and horror. Um, like real not, ones, or maybe not your favorite. So that I have like I have horror the, stories. The worst but I don't know if one. it's like uh, I don't know if it's a favorite. Like it's it's a bad one. Uh, you really want me to tell you this? If you want to share with the audience, if it's shareable, um, it is shareable. But uh, we actually have a video about it. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, so here is the story. Again, I don't know if it's a favorite. To be uh, just to put things in perspective, but so. I spoke to a mom, her name is Lisa, and she's actually a private investigator. So she is knowledgeable about cybersecurity. She preached her kids about, you know, all the risks and all of that. And she told me that, you know, one day she, uh, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning, she's waking up her kids and her kid is not in her room. Her 13 year old is not in her room. And she freaked out, like, where is she? So she's asking her sister, like, where is she? She said, I don't know. She like at 1 a.m., like she climbed out of the window with her backpack and she went out with someone, I think from Snapchat or whatever. And she was like, oh, what no. exactly? Oh, no. And um, so she started to like talking with her friends, with her kids' friends, and she figured out who the kid was from Snapchat 
that she basically went out with. And she started to uh, post it all over social media. Basically, you know, telling her, telling people, you know, help me find my, my kid. And a few hours later, she got a phone call from her kid. And she was in a car, abandoned somewhere far, like three hours from home. And um, the story ended well. But apparently what happened is that that kid she met on Snapchat, he was a teenager. He was basically trying to, uh, you know, sex traffic her, you know, like. Uh, oh, my God. Exactly. And he saw this whole, you know, social media post with his face and all of that. And he just abandoned her in the car and uh, he went away. And so that kid was probably also a victim. You know, they're using kids that are also victims to lure other kids. So we think usually about kidnap when you think about like uh, a grown up. Do, they all do it in the white van. Yeah, this is not, this is just so a it's kid. a network that take advantage of other kids to make them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. pull other, other pull kids. Pull other kids. Yeah. And eventually, yeah, and, and that poor kid, she didn't even get what's happening. Like she, that's what happened after that. That's what they realized that happened. But she was mostly upset that he left her abandoned in a car like three hours away from home and she was crying and like she didn't understand even like, you know, oh my. where this is going. This so, is terrible. But this is like Snapchat, you know? So again, it's not a favorite story. I, no, uh, it's, it's a bad a, one. You talked about horror, but I think, you know, I'm sharing this because I think parents should understand that um, there are also physical risks here. This is not just, and, and kidnap is, like you said, not an old guy or an adult with a white van, yeah. you know, offering candies. This can be somebody just, you know, that your kids are talking to. They can be 16, they can be 17. That's it. Cool. Sorry for that. Not guys. cool, no. but uh, no, I don't know. Maybe you should edit it later because this was supposed to be a fun part. But we no, no, no. Definitely you said want honor. You no, said no, no, honor. We so but, definitely want people one. to be aware learn of this. and be aware. And uh, we're parents, and yeah. as you said, we all. And need she to was be a involved. private investigator. So one tip she gave, by the way, and I sort of uh, talked about it earlier. She said, "Look, I preached." about this like i know this stuff like this is what i do for life like i talk to my kids over and over again about the risks but she said i didn't listen enough she said i should have instead of preaching them asking them you know who are you connected with you know uh who are your friends or even like be curious ask not like scare them and and so that was her advice basically be involved in their life because she could have known. She maybe, said, "I could have known." Maybe the kid would have shared with her that she has a new friend yeah, on yeah, Snapchat. Yeah. I could have asked. Uh, she said, "You know, like she, because her kid didn't see that Snapchat teenager is a risk. Like she would have probably talked about him, but okay. she didn't Good see tip. that. So she was like, you know, preaching is one thing, but she said." You need to like be involved in their digital life. You need to ask. You need to download the apps they're downloading. You can. You need to use those things. You need to like be aware of this parallel life that they're living, and not think the risks are only you know on the way to school and back. This is so important. Move from pre preaching to actually being involved and involved asking and them in a friendly way exactly. that will not push them away exactly. from you. Well, here is exactly. a topic for tonight's dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Cool. Um, what new... Uh, what new technology is going to change the world in the next 15 years? And, and I think yeah. you already kind of like alluded, but other things other than AI that are coming up? What I do think you think? AI is big. AI is big. It's already I here. Think, I think it's... Uh, we're just starting with this AI thing. It's... Uh, it's uh, it's as big as think uh, I think as the internet. Like I would go Maybe to, bigger. Yeah. I, it will change how we interact with you know. Just imagine where we can go with this, you know. Like, and I'm already seeing this is happening. People are using ChatGPT, and and by the way, there's other tools. You know, I've been using AI, you know, for many years before ChatGPT. There were you know, I've used Copy AI, and you know, there's Open AI, and there's like a lot of stuff, but it's starting to to get to a point where 
content is being created by AI. So people are posting AI stuff on you know social media. And just imagine you can click on reply or comment and it will, an AI will give you an option to comment and basically we'll get to a point where AI is talking to AI. And there will be like, different AIs with trained on different yeah. uh, subjects and they will be more experts or maybe having more opinions, biased towards specific areas. Yeah, and the thing, is, the thing is, is that in terms of also risk, um, the problem is that we're now even giving more trust to AI. So we were talking about, you know, trust as a vulnerability or as an exploit. Um, so we were Googling and we're saying, hey, they're tracking everything we're doing. Now we're basically volunteeringly and giving, giving them access to everything. Every, we, we, we tell them to type, you know, here is the offer letter that I need, or here's the customer information, please format it into. So first of all, we're giving AI way more information than, than we, we give ever imagined. Like, yeah. good luck to DLP, by the way, you know, trying to <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> come yeah. up with that. With Absolutely. A solution for that. Absolutely. So, and you have bots that can pretend to be you. You can have a uh, voiceover, you can have a deep fake. So now like, talk about trust. Like, you know, this virtual world is becoming crazy. Like, you know, you'll need to get out more and meet people in order to actually, you know. See that <laughs> it's yep. in real and not fake. Well, Gabi, yeah. it was a pleasure. We learned Thank a you. ton. Uh, you. And you're doing such an important thing. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I really enjoyed it and uh, would love to, yeah, see more of the stuff you're doing. Come back again when you have interesting stories. Um, I will. And, and I'll come with a superhero next time. Absolutely. I'll be, I won't be, be boring. The cape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, thanks everyone for listening. Please rate and review us wherever you get your podcast. We are here weekly, the Didi and Lital show. Thanks, Didi. Thanks, Lital. Thank you, Gabi. Thank you see very you much. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.